Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Ellie Colt and I am an alumni engagement officer within the alumni team at York. I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you for joining us at our May session of the Gratitude Speaker Series. This is how to effectively use LinkedIn. And especially warm welcome to all of you who will be graduating this summer. I know it's not the way you plan to graduate, but you did it. And we officially welcome you to our 350,000 person extended family. As this event is virtual and we are not all gathered in the same space, I recognize that the land acknowledgement I'm about to deliver might not be for the territory that you are currently on. If this is the case, please take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you are on and the current treaty holders. As a member of the York University community, I recognize that many indigenous nations have longstanding relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Matisse communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon, One Pum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. I'm grateful for the opportunity to live and work on Treaty 13 land. Now onto some housekeeping before we begin. If at any time you need some help with this experience, please feel free to click on the Q&A button on the bottom of the screen and enter your question. Our team is ready and eager to help you. Um, for those of you who are new to Gratitude, the Gratitude program takes place every year to provide recent graduates and graduating students with the opportunity to connect with inspiring alumni and learn about a variety of personal and professional development topics. Today's session is in partnership with the Career and Education Development Center, which remains fully open to new alumni for two years after graduation. I highly recommend visiting the website at careers.yorku.ca. Following today's talk, all attendees will be able to answer a poll question for a chance to win one $50 gift card to the York University Bookstore. So make sure you stick around for that. Now, you each came here for a reason, and though we can't see you, we do want to do our best to provide you with the helpful advice and insight you're looking for. We'd like to know, what do you hope to get out of this session today? So if you could please take a few moments to type using the Q&A function, um, I'd love to hear some of your responses. Great, thank you so much for participating. Now I'm honored to introduce you to our alumni speaker and she might be familiar to some of you. Serena Sohal is an employer and alumni liaison at the Career and Education Development Center at York. As well as working at York, Serena is also soon to be a double alumna. She graduated with a BA in psychology in 2011 and is currently pursuing a master's of education. Serena's ultimate goal is to help York community members to reach their full potential and achieve career success in addition to connecting progressive employers with hardworking and qualified candidates. Serena, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Ellie, for that warm welcome. Take it away, I'll pass things over to you. Okay, great. Hello everyone, just give me one second to set up this presentation and we'll get started. Okay. So I hope everyone can see that. Please let me know if you are unable to see that presentation and I'm just gonna open up the chat so we can um, make sure that we are keeping up to date with that. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, as Ellie mentioned, my name is Serena Sohal. Uh, I'm the employer and alumni liaison at Career Education and Development at York, formerly known as the Career Center. Um, and I'm gonna be your facilitator for the next 45 minutes. So over the next 45 minutes, uh, we are gonna touch upon a few different areas. So the workshop today is how to effectively use LinkedIn. Um, first, we're gonna take a look at two different types of job search that exist. So one is passive job search and the other is active. Uh, we're then gonna explore how you can use LinkedIn in your job search and briefly look at some of the success rates of various methods that I'm gonna to mention today. Uh, we're then going to go over steps on how to actually build a strong professional LinkedIn profile. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with some tips on how you can effectively use this platform with all the many features that it has. 
Uh, we have reserved also a short window at the end of today's presentation for a Q&A in case you have any questions. But I also wanted to mention that I will be pausing throughout today's presentation um, just to check if you need clarification on anything. So feel free to add any questions that you have into the chat function or into the Q&A, um, and we'll make sure that we are um, addressing those as well. Uh, oh, and before we get started, uh, we do have a few questions for you, just to give me a better idea of how you're using the platform, how much you're using the platform, and what you're using it for. Um, so Janine, can we go ahead and prompt that first poll, please? Thank you so much. So if I can just get all of you to um, answer this first question, and then we'll launch the next one. Excellent. So do you currently have a LinkedIn profile? Okay, so we still have 78% yes, 22% no. Okay, so that's really good to know. I'll make sure that I go over some of the other details as well. Thank you. Janine, can we launch the next one? Okay, so this is how often do you use LinkedIn? Okay, okay, a lot of you are using it once a week, so that's fantastic. And then a, a definitely some once a month, once a year, once a day. Okay, so that's really, really good to know. And I understand for those of you who said that you don't have a profile, this would not apply to you. Um, so for our next question, um, for those of you who don't have a profile, think about what it is that you would hopefully like to use LinkedIn for. So our next question is, what do you use LinkedIn for? Feel free to choose all that apply. And again, if you don't use it right now, what do you hope to use it for? Excellent. Okay, so as expected, job search, great. Making connections, fantastic. Uh, staying connected or staying current, sorry, research. Um, excellent. So as we move on to the next slide, I would love to hear from those of you that said other. Um, if you could even just type in and let us know um, what those other um, what, what those other things would be that you're using the platform for. Um, and then I'll make sure that I kind of touch upon those as well. So thank you so much for participating in that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so for those of you who already use LinkedIn, you may already know this. Um, so this might be a refresher. For those of you who are not using LinkedIn that often or have never actually used the platform, um, this is gonna be really important information. So reasons for using LinkedIn. First and foremost, this platform allows you to stay up to date in the industry and areas that you are most interested in. Um, you can access important articles and get posts that are relevant to that industry coming directly to your daily feed um, every time that you enter into the platform. Platform. LinkedIn is also a tool that will help you build your brand and develop a professional and credible online presence. Uh, through this platform, you can research companies and industries. You can also search job opportunities, get alerts about new opportunities, and apply for jobs directly on the platform. And last but not least, and sometimes most importantly, is you can build and expand your professional network on this platform and connect with individuals on a global level. So there's no restrictions in terms of how far they are or where they are. Um, it allows you to connect with anyone, anywhere, at any time. So a lot of times job seekers wonder what the difference is between a LinkedIn profile and a resume. Um, so your LinkedIn profile should be an add-on. It should not be a direct duplication of your resume. Um, it's a tool that's used to add credibility and build on the strengths and skills that you have already mentioned in your other marketing tools. Um, so if you mentioned that you had great communication skills or you have great interpersonal skills, LinkedIn is an opportunity for you to highlight those skills, but also to expand on them and add more evidence and um, we'll talk about some of the evidence that you can provide there. Um, so you can attach multimedia, for example. So this could be images, documents, and videos um, to help provide evidence for that. So for example, if you say, um, if you have skills and experience in facilitation, or presentation, uh, or presenting, sorry, or teaching, you can actually add a picture or video of yourself doing that activity, therefore showing employers um, 
again, that there's credibility to what you're saying in your marketing tools. So bringing our attention back to credibility, um, your network on LinkedIn can also add endorsements for your skills that you've listed. So if you've listed certain skills on your profile, um, other people in your network can say, yep, I agree with that. This person does have this skill and they can add an endorsement for you. Um, so when employers see this, um, they see that other professionals are giving you their stamp of approval uh, for skills and experiences that you have mentioned in your application. So it just makes it even stronger um, and more credible as well. So LinkedIn is essentially an online platform, right? It's an e-portfolio in many ways, um, and the platform advances every year. So by adding new features, um, new ways for you to connect, new ways for you to market yourself and brand yourself. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the existing features today, um, just so you have an idea of everything that this platform can do for you. Okay, so now we're going to get into the two types of job search. So the two types of job search that we've mentioned here is passive and the other is active. Another way of looking at this is reactive job search and proactive. So I'll explain what that means. So a passive or reactive job search refers to job seekers who may or may not be serious about finding the job. So maybe you're kind of in the beginning stages of your job search. Um, you know, maybe you would like to have a job, but it's not something that you like immediately need right away. Um, so these job seekers are looking for opportunities online um, and they're applying for those opportunities and waiting for a response to happen. So job seekers in this stage are passively waiting for a reaction to occur versus active or proactive. So job seekers in this stage are much more serious about the jobs that they're looking for. They are willing and able to step outside of the box and proactively identify and target opportunities through networking um, and by accessing the hidden job market, which is so the hidden job market is all the jobs that are not advertised online, jobs that are available, but employers have not posted them online. So this pass, sorry, this active or proactive job search allows you to actually identify them, access them, um, and actually obtain those opportunities as well. So we're going to dig into that a little deeper. So if you are in the passive job search stage, um, you will find LinkedIn very useful. So first and foremost, LinkedIn will allow you to um, build your profile and build your brand at the same time to make you findable. So for this reason, we encourage you to be very intentional about your online presence. Um, everything that you put on your profile should reflect your skills, should reflect your qualities, your expertise, your experience, your professional interest. Um, and one tip that we have would be to research what skills and assets are actually in demand for the jobs that you want um, and make sure that you're incorporating those skills and experiences, those keywords into your profile. Um, so one way that you can do this by so one way that you can find these skills is through job postings. Um, so we recommend, for example, gathering four to five job postings for that ideal job that you're looking for and identify the overlapping skills that show up continuously throughout every job posting. And that will let you know what the key skills in your industry or for that position are. Um, and then again, identifying the skills and then embedding them within your profile where it makes sense. You can access job postings through various different means. Um, on LinkedIn specifically, they do have a student, um, student and internship portal. So that's a great place to check. Um, another thing that you can do is you can find job postings anywhere on LinkedIn. So any recruiter or employer can post any job postings. You can look at those. Um, you can also look at job postings that you find online through Workopolis or Indeed or just through Google searches. Um, and then last but not least, please remember that the Career Education and Development um, at York does have its own job portal that you have access to as alumni up to two years. Um, so the great thing about that job portal is those employers are looking for students and new graduates. Um, so the skills and the jobs and the experience is very relevant to what you may have as well. So by targeting your profile, forming your brand and highlighting key skills and relevant skills, um, you're going to be increasing your chances of being seen by recruiters and employers um, when they're doing searches online. So when they do searches, they're actually actually searching by keywords. Um, so if you have those keywords in your profile, you're going to be um, part of that filtered search as well. Uh, we also encourage you to signal your interest to recruiters at companies by creating job alerts for positions that you're interested in. So if you apply for a position or you see a position, um, you can then go create a job alert. So LinkedIn will notify you if a similar job becomes available or if that company posts again. So you can adjust those alerts based on what your needs are. Um, you can also create these alerts for new jobs posted by companies through their LinkedIn page. And once you've created the alert, you can get notified when new jobs that match your skills, um, like I said, are available. Um, and I believe it shows up in the notifications tab at the top. 
Uh, and finally, to make the best out of your job search, you can follow organizations and join groups related to your professional interests uh, to expand your network, stay up to date, and to get uh, news about job opportunities. So um, again, this is all ways that if you are in that passive job search stage right now, this is ways that you can make the best out of your job search and really utilize LinkedIn um, for that stage that you're in. Okay, so for those of you who are in the active job search stage um, or are kind of working your way towards that stage, here are a few tips in terms of how you can get the best out of LinkedIn as well. Um, I also want to note that most job seekers do start off in the passive stage. Um, however, it's no surprise that having a proactive job search can increase your chances of connecting to opportunities, um, which can be opportunities that you may not have been looking for um, or opportunities that are actually not advertised online. So for active job search, first and foremost, you want to get the word out about your job search status and interests and engage your network on LinkedIn. So you can do that in a variety of different ways. One, you can um, actually be active on the platform, and we'll talk a little bit about what active on the platform looks like. Um, but you can update your status, you can comment, you can share, you can like, you can repost, you can participate in group discussions. All of these are ways to stay engaged and to ensure that the um, that you are kind of popping up on other people's news feeds as well. Because every time you like something, repost something, share something, you pop up on your network's news feed. Um, so the more you do this, um, again, the more visible you're going to be, um, but please be strategic about this. Don't just post stuff and like stuff for the sake of doing it. Um, be strategic about what you're posting and liking, because again, it's going to be public and everything that you're posting is going into building your whole brand. Um, so again, being strategic is key. Um, next thing that you want to do is you want to create a clear and engaging yet concise um, headline. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but we want this headline to have an impact. Um, I'm going to provide you some examples of what headlines could look like, but they're just examples just to get you started. Um, and then I'll give you some tips on how you can potentially create your own. And then last but not least for that section about getting your work, getting the word out um, is include a summary that highlights your key skills, experiences and accomplishments um, and goals. So the summary section is found um, right underneath your name and your headline. Uh, and it's almost the response to tell me about yourself. So that's what your summary should be is you letting in, you letting professionals that are looking at your profile know um, about who you are, um, what you're looking for and what you can do. So best way to begin the process of creating a headline and summary is to actually review profiles of professionals in the roles, organizations, or the industries that you're interested in. By reviewing their profiles, you'll actually get to see what you like, what you don't like, what's resonating with you, what's working for others, what's not working for others. Um, so it's a really great way to find out what fits best for you and your profile. Um, this review is also a great way to see different career journeys and what experiences may have helped them get to where they are. So if you want to be a financial advisor and you look at someone's profile that is currently a financial advisor, um, you can see where they went from graduation to their first job in the field to the field that they're currently in right now. Um, and like I said, a, a public profile, you'll be able to actually look at any professionals that you want to. Okay. Um, and I'm going to stop soon for questions, but just have a couple of more slides to get through. Okay, so the third thing when it comes to what you can do if you're in the active job search stage is to build and maintain your network. So reviewing profiles, as I mentioned, staying active, as I mentioned, these are all fantastic and will be very valuable for your job search. But equally as important is reaching out to professionals and building your network. So you want to start up by reaching out to professionals and organizations and roles that are of interest to you. Um, once you've connected, you want to build some rapport. So it's not a matter of connecting with people and just letting them kind of, you know, increase your network. Um, it's actually about engaging that person and trying to build a relationship with them. Um, you want to then identify the connections that you actually want to engage a little bit further. Um, those connections that you perhaps want to meet with and gain information from, gain insights and advice from by requesting informational interviews. So there's different layers of connections that you can make as well. 
um, you want to also give back to your network. And you can do this in a variety of different ways. Um, this does not necessarily mean that you have to give them something like a gift or something monetary, like nothing like that. What we mean by giving back is by engaging with them through the platform as well. So you can do this by commenting on something that they've posted, maybe resharing or reposting something that they posted. Um, you can also share information with them um, that might be of mutual interest. So this could be something professional, um, like maybe maybe an article, like an industry specific article, or it could also be personal. If you've already built that connection with this person and you've gained, you've built some rapport with them, um, maybe you had a conversation about cooking and maybe what you're sharing with them is a recipe. So it, it's a matter of what works for you and what works for that relationship, but always seeing, you know, what can I do to give back um, for this voluntary advice, for this time, for this guidance that this person is providing? Um, and then last but not least, my favorite tool on LinkedIn is the alumni tool to identify potential connections. Um, so for all of you, you can actually go onto the York University LinkedIn page. Um, and on that page, um, there is a tab, um, I think in the same place where you can find like the about you section, there's a tab there that says alumni. If you click on that, it will show you close to 200,000 alumni that are registered in LinkedIn who are York alumni. And you can actually filter those alumni by where they graduate, or sorry, um, what program they graduated from, where they're currently working, what they're currently doing, um, what their skill sets are, what their areas of expertise are. You can filter through all of that, and then you can identify the key alumni or professionals that you want to connect with. Um, so narrowing down the options will allow you to be strategic and mindful um, about who you connect with and will help you really build that genuine and authentic connection. Because once you start to narrow it down, you begin to ask yourself the questions of, why do I want to connect with this person? What am I hoping to gain? So when the connection actually happens, you understand better about how to create that genuine uh, relationship with them. Okay, so before I get to that, I'm just going to take a look at the Q&A here. Um, so we have a question um, that says, what do you think about posting literature reviews that were projects in previous courses, such as PowerPoint presentations or essays? Um, so Michael, um, I would say that any as long as the project was yours and only yours, um, and you feel like it would be adding to the skill set that you're putting on your LinkedIn profile, then 100% you can definitely add that as like um, as a document or as an additional piece. Um, the question that you want to ask yourself is: Is this addition going to help me in my job search? Is this addition going to help employers see um, that I am the employer candidate that they're looking for? If the answer to that is yes, um, then I think for sure go for it um, and then you can always adjust things right remember that if you add it and you find you know two months later that is really not working for you you can remove it and add something else um, but if you are looking for a way to showcase literature reviews or you're looking for a way to showcase projects LinkedIn is a fantastic place for that um, so we have another question here I'm an international student I knew you, I know using LinkedIn can make connections with people um, can help you make connections with people who work in the industry, but I don't know how I can make connections with them. For example, what should I say to them? Okay, so we're actually gonna go through this a little bit later in the presentation. I'll show you um, kind of a draft message of what you can send to employers or sorry, professionals when you're trying to connect with them. Um, please share a link to LinkedIn page you just described. Um, so maybe Ellie, could I possibly get you to provide a little bit of information on the alumni tool? Um, and if not, Ellie, if you don't have that, I do actually have a document that I can share at the end of my presentation, which actually walks through the alumni tool. Okay, so that looks like we've gotten all the questions. So thank you so much for that. We'll stop again in a couple of slides in case you have any more. Okay, so this slide here, um, really, really quickly, is just a slide to show success rates for various job search methods. Um, so as you can see on this slide, active methods such as targeted cold calling, strategic networking, direct contacting with professionals um, actually have a much higher success rate than more passive methods such as responding to job postings and sending mass resumes that have not been targeted. Um, we are in a very competitive job market, right? I mean, even before the pandemic, it was competitive, especially in the GTA. So the idea of applying to jobs online, um, although that can be part of your job search and should be part of your job search, um, in order to get more responses and to have a higher success rate, there does 
there does need, there is a need to step outside of the box and try things that other people are not trying and making those um, more genuine face-to-face -face connections over the phone, whatever it may be, but trying to connect with the people behind the screen. Um, so you're not just passively applying for jobs online. Okay, so for this next section, um, we are going to talk about how to build a stronger LinkedIn profile. Um, and I just want to see here, no questions, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to move forward and I'll stop. Like I said, any questions, please feel free to add them into the Q&A. Okay, so when it comes to building a strong professional profile, I think I have about nine steps here. Um, so there is, um, I'm going to go over briefly what to add. Now, I want to remind all of you, um, this webinar that we're doing today is kind of like an introductory webinar for how to effectively use LinkedIn. We also do have a new webinar that we do in-house at the Career Center called Rock Your LinkedIn Profile um, that provides more information about the features on LinkedIn that can help you build your brand. Um, but for right now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to build the brand, um, but more so I really want to focus on how to build that strong foundation on your profile. So first and foremost, uh, being consistent is key. So step one is adding a display name. Um, and when I talk about consistency, it's more about ensuring that the um, that you use the same name with your other marketing tools, such as your resume, your cover letter, um, any e-portfolios that you have, just to make sure that the name stays consistent, whatever name you choose to use. Um, you also have the option to record how to pronounce your name and display the audio on your profile, which is a really cool feature. Um, however, please note that this recording and editing feature is actually only available through the LinkedIn app, um, through your iPhone, through your Android, uh, but it's not available through their web browser for some reason. So if you are looking to do that, just remember to go onto the app to do that. The second thing um, is your uh, profile picture. So your profile picture is actually the first thing that new connections will see. Um, so ensuring that you have a warm and friendly picture that features only you is really important. Um, you do not need to pay a professional to take a picture. Uh, your webcams, your smartphones all have the capability of taking professional pictures. Um, you just want to make sure, as I mentioned, that you're the only one in the picture um, and just having a headshot, right? So kind of from your shoulders up is the best way to go. But if you have a picture of yourself um, doing something like maybe you presented at a conference and that's what you want your profile picture to be, um, you may want to include that as a media piece, as an added media piece in your profile and keep your profile picture as your headshot. Um, so some, an example would be something like this. Uh, so a picture increases your credibility and allows people to recognize who you are when they receive invitations to connect. Um, I know for me personally, I remember faces more than I remember names. So seeing the face there will help me make that connection. Um, I've also heard from a lot of professionals and a lot of employers that they hesitate adding new connections that they don't know that don't have a picture. Um, and that really just means it, it almost just seems like the profile is incomplete. Um, so I highly encourage you to add a picture of yourself on there um, just because that is essentially what this platform has been created for. But again, on that note, I do want to mention if you're not comfortable adding a picture, um, these are only suggestions based on what we've heard from employers and professionals. Um, but there's it, nothing is mandatory that says that you have to put a picture of yourself. Okay, so step three would be to create a clear, concise, and professional and unique headline. So the headline actually appears at the top of your pro uh, profile under your name. When, you, um, when searches are done on LinkedIn by recruiters, professionals, or employers, and they get the results of all the people that they've searched, um, what they actually see is your picture, they see your name, they see your headline, and they see your location. So those four things are kind of major in catching people's attention and letting them see right away that you are the you are a good fit for the search that they're trying to make. Um, so using keywords um, relevant to your industry um, is actually really helpful in adding it to your headline um, just to make sure that you're catching people's attention. But again, being strategic about those relevant skills, your headline should not just be skill after skill after skill like it should it should be unique to you, but it should include maybe one or two keywords as well. And I'll give you some examples of these. So here are the examples. Uh, so we have here third year sociology students seeking a summer internship in qualitative research with interest in child, uh, children and youth advocacy. Um, then we have here fourth year accounting student at York University, vice president of the Atkinson Professional Accounting Association. 
We have recent public administration graduate with a semester long internship experience in the area of public policy, strategic planning and government affairs. Um, second last is aspiring environmental technician with two years of laboratory work experience. And last but not least, mechanical engineer with a passion for building um, medical devices. So as you can see here, each headline has decided to mention something different. You can mention what your career goals are, such as this. You can mention what your areas of interest are. You can mention what your experience is. It all comes down to what is it that you want employers or recruiters to know about you right away that's going to catch their attention and make them click on your profile to kind of look at it further. Um, so very much like your uh, highlight of qualifications on your resume or your summary of qualifications on your resume, um, this is a preview to your profile. So you want to make sure that the preview is engaging and it's eye catching and it's going to be something that resonates with the industry that you're applying for. Okay, so step four is to add a profile summary. So this summary can actually be found right underneath your, um, like your headline and your location. And as I mentioned before, this is essentially your response to the question, tell me about yourself. So a LinkedIn summary can be up to 2000 characters in length. Um, it, it's important to know your audience when you're writing this summary. Think about what your job tar target is or job targets, for example, and provide an engaging description about your background and expertise that will help them understand why they should connect with you. You wanna mention in this section, um, what makes you unique? Express your mission as a professional, uh, express your motivation and skills to people who view your profile. So this is where you talk about your passions. This is where you get to showcase your personality and let them know what type of impact you want to make as a professional in the field that you're hoping to get into. Um, so if you're in environmental studies, for example, and you want to get into a green career, um, you may want to mention some of your passions in this area as well, right? So this is, again, a place to showcase your personality right away. Um, wherever applicable, again, we encourage you to use field related keywords to highlight your experiences, specialties, any noteworthy accomplishments that you want to mention, um, any of your um, any information about what you aspire to do or a projected career path would also be very helpful. Um, and then adding a list of specialties or core competencies at the bottom can also further um, enhance your summary and include more keywords. Now, I do want to mention here that um, for those of you who may not have a clear job target at the moment, this summary may not be as specific right now as you would like it to be. Um, so I want you to like expand a little bit further. And if you can't do uh, keywords that are relevant to the job that you're applying for, maybe expand it a little bit further and do keywords that are relevant to the industry that you're applying for. Um, but still making sure that you're you're targeting your profile in some way, because the more generic you make your profile, um, I understand that many of you might think that making it more generic will open you up to more opportunities. But the reality is that the more specific you can make it, the more targeted you can make it, um, the more you're going to ensure that, again, you're popping up in those searches and that when employers are looking at your profile, there's no doubt in their mind that you would be a good fit for that role or that industry. Like you don't want them to have to second guess it and you want to make it very obvious for them. Okay, so here is a sample summary. So we have here, I am an experienced mechanical engineer providing highly valuable and practical designs on projects. I have designed over 10 material handling systems, which have proven to be extremely efficient um, operationally as well as cost effective. I always put the needs of my clients and project end users first to ensure that my designs are practical, usable, and economically viable. Please view my experience below to read some of my projects. So as you can see, they've written some of the areas that they are ex um, that they have expertise in. So this is just an example of a summary. As I mentioned before, take a look at people that you admire, people that are your mentors, people that you want to become your mentors, and look at their profile. Take a look at what they've written in their summary, because the individuals that you resonate the most with, um, they might be the ones that you could perhaps learn the most from in terms of how they've structured their pro um, profiles. And again, it gives you an opportunity to see, I like how this sounds, I don't like how this sounds, um, and really for you to get real life examples from professionals. 
Okay, so we have here step six, which is work experience. Um, so again, as I mentioned before, consistency to your resume is key here. Um, consistency with job titles, consistency with job duties, consistency with dates. Um, these are things that employers will be looking for. Um, so do remember that you can add, change, or remove a position in the experience section on your profile at any time. Uh, LinkedIn actually automatically groups together positions that were held at the same company. So if you moved up in a company, it's automatically going to group those together, despite if there was kind of like a break between it or not. Um, you can also upload media such as external documents, uh, literature reviews, photos, sites, videos, presentations, job descriptions directly onto your profile here. Um, so depending on what you think is going to be best. And again, you can learn from other people in your field and find out what they're doing. Um, and then under your job titles, I encourage you to write a brief overview of what your job entails and then aim to really talk about those accomplishment statements instead of just listing duty statements um, for each experience. So I encourage you, again, not to repeat what's on your resume, but to build on it a little bit more um, because we don't want to duplicate it, right? So saying it in a different way, you also don't need to put four to six bullet points under each description, you can write it in a paragraph form, you can write it in sentence form, you can do it in bullets, whatever works best for you. Um, but as I mentioned, this should be an add on to your resume, we do not want to copy and paste what's on your resume. Step six is education. So adding education um, is very simple on this platform. You can fill, um, it actually takes you through the little wizard that helps you go step-by-step step to add the education. Uh, your program information needs to be correct on your profile. Cause again, there is going to be some cross-referencing that's done by employers. Um, optional information that you can include only if you think that it's necessary. If you're applying to a field where employers are asking for your grade, perhaps you wanna add your grade onto the profile. If employers in your experience have not asked for it, you do not need to include it. Um, another thing that you can include here, which you may not had, have had room to include on your resume, are things such as extracurricular activities that you participated in, um, any hobbies, any interests, um, volunteer experience that perhaps you weren't able to elaborate on in your resume. This is a perfect place to put all of that stuff. Um, and as I mentioned, media such as photos, videos, links to documents um, to showcase your proud moments while attending school, these can all be here as well. So um, questions about projects, for example, um, where that would go depends on where it makes sense. So if you did a project in school that you essentially would count as experience, almost like a freelance project, then you could potentially add that under your work experience as an actual job experience. But if it's something that you um, perhaps did a project on, but there was no um, there, like you feel like you can't expand on it too much, then perhaps you can add those um, under education. You can also add relevant courses um, under education as well, right? So again, a place for you to add all the information that you weren't able to fit into your resume, but just making sure that whatever you add, you ask yourself that question. Is the employer going to care about this? Is this helping my brand? And if the answer to both is yes, then go ahead and include it. Okay, so step seven is adding skills and endorsements. And I just want to take a look at the time. We're doing good. Okay, so step seven is adding skills and endorsements. Um, so as I mentioned before, when you create your profile, you actually have the opportunity to add key skills that you feel like you have. That can be anything from um, PowerPoint to presentation skills to data analysis to um data science, right? Like it could be anything from across the board, what you have experience in. Um, you can add all of those skills. And then what happens is your network is actually able to take a look at your skills and endorse you for those skills. So if you worked with someone or if you did a presentation with someone, maybe that classmate wants to go and endorse you for your great presentation skills. Um, maybe a professor wants to endorse you for your great writing skills. So you have an opportunity to um, not only endorse other people, but to also get endorsements um, in return as well. So have your connections automatically. Um, so your, your connections will actually automatically be prompted um, when you are adjusting your endorsements. So there's actually a way that you can kind of put an alert out there um, and get people to give you endorsements. Um, as you develop new skills over your career, we would encourage you to add those skills as well and also adjust them. So what ends up happening is on your profile, you might list 20 skills. 
but maybe the skills that you're being most endorsed for are Microsoft Office and Excel and like skills that perhaps are not like your top skills. So what you might want to do in that circumstance is you might want to only mention the skills that you want to be endorsed for. Because if you start getting endorsed for those secondary um, skills that perhaps employers are not too concerned with, those are going to be the ones that pop up at the top of your profile. So you can actually be really strategic and actually delete those skills or hide those skills and really advertise those other skills and try to get endorsements for those as well. Uh, okay, so we have a question here. Should you add the company website link that you worked for under your features? Yeah, you totally can if you if, if that makes sense to connect it. Um, you can also sometimes when you um, add the company name and you can actually add the logo and LinkedIn actually connects the company to your profile automatically. Um, so th there's different ways that you can do it. But if you would like to include the website, you can definitely include that under the features as well. I believe it allows you to do that. Okay, so step eight is adding other profile sections. So um, this is, again, not mandatory. This is something that um, if you, again, feel like this is going to build your brand and further enhance your profile, then these are things that you can consider doing. Um, so you can consider um, adding additional information, uh, such as volunteer experience, right? So remember, experience is experience, and your volunteer experience is counted. Um, employers look at it. Employers love it. Um, if it is relevant or even, even if it maybe is not relevant to your industry, but provides you with transferable skills that is going to fill a gap on your profile, definitely add those. Um, you can also add another section here for publication. So maybe you don't want to add um, publications or projects or anything like that under experience or education. Maybe you want to highlight them in a completely different section. Um, you can also pick a different section for courses and licenses and certifications, uh, projects, honors, awards, um, and also a whole other section for just media. Maybe you just want a section that includes photos and videos of your work and other things that you've worked on. So you can really adjust your profile um, and do it based on what works best for you. Um, adding industry relevant courses is also a great way to include more keywords and showcase your field um, related knowledge. Another thing I wanted to point out is uh, LinkedIn learning. So for those of you um, who still have access to your Passport York account, you would be able to access this. I know public libraries are not open right now, but all of you when the public libraries are open will have access to LinkedIn learning for free. Um, so that is something to look into because LinkedIn learning is a way for you to complete um, you know, short certificates, short courses, short modules that are relevant to your industry, and then directly connect them to your LinkedIn profile. So it shows employers that you're actively learning, that you're that you are an ongoing learner, that you are building your skills, and it shows that you have these skills as well. So great way to kind of add more to your profile. Step nine um, is requesting recommendations. So. Um, Gone are the days where, um, you know, we were able to collect recommendation letters from people that we've worked with and supervisors. Um, many employers are not accepting recommendation letters anymore. Um, so this is actually a great way to not only replace it, but also to advance that feature as well. So a recommendation is written on your profile to recognize or commend a connection, such as an employee, a coworker, a business partner, um, a colleague, a, a classmate, at whatever capacity you work with someone in, you can actually write a recommendation about them. Um, you can, as a job seeker, you can actually request your first degree connection. So these are people that you are directly connected to. You can actually request for them to write you a recommendation. So what ends up happening is that you don't have to wait for employers to ask you for a recommendation. I mean, if you go to an interview, they're still going to ask you for recommendations, which are totally different. Um, but this is a way for you to showcase recommendations without people having to ask for it. It's also a way for you to curate all those recommendations without having to keep physical recommendation letters and making sure that they don't get coffee stains on them or they don't get lost. It's a way to keep them all safe and to keep them um, all visible to the people that you want them to be visible to. Recommendations can be extremely powerful and is a fantastic way for you to boost your LinkedIn profile, especially if you are using it as an online resume, if you're using it for searching for better job opportunities, to connect with people that you would like to collaborate with. Recommendations, again, puts that stamp of approval and gives you more credibility. 
So instead of gathering the reference letters, as I mentioned, um, you can now have a diverse set of references and display them virtually. Um, another thing to mention as well is normally when you get recommendations letters, um, there is a um, I guess like a rule to say that, you know, it has to be someone that you reported to, um, but recommendations here could be people that you've collaborated with, right, people that you've worked with. Um, and this is information that employers don't necessarily ask for, um, but it's fantastic for you to provide it. I just want to take a look at the chat here. Okay. Uh, are there endorsements visible to me on my profile or only when someone else views my profile? Um, so Michael, um, your endorsements, yes, are visible to you on your own profile. Um, you can actually adjust them, you can delete them, you can add more, whatever you wanna do. Um, when other people go and endorse you and then they look at your profile, they'll be able to see your endorsements as well. Um, they might they might click on your endorsements and expand to see all of your skills, but most of the time they just take a look at like the top four that are mentioned in your profile. And that's the reason I mentioned being strategic about which ones pop up. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so um, last but not least here is step 10, which is customizing your LinkedIn URL. Um, so personalizing your public profile URL and making it easy for others to identify you in the search results is a fantastic way to not only brand yourself, but to make sure that you're being seen. Um, the customized URL looks cleaner and can be easily included on your resume. So by default, your customized your URL might be like your first initial with like a bunch of numbers. Um, you can actually customize it and make it like your first and last name um, with like maybe one or two recognizable numbers, but you can do more to make it so it resonates with who you are and your brand. Um, so your customized URL must contain three to 100 letters or numbers. It does not expect accept spaces, symbols, or special characters. Since you will be sharing the URL with people, it's best to include your first and last name. And then once you have a branded URL, you can actually include that link to your resume. So when you're sending your resume out, you're connecting employers directly to that URL. Um, so this can be found um, under contact information. So when you're on your LinkedIn page, um, under... So, and I, I wish I had a screenshot here, I apologize. So under your name, there's gonna be your heading, then there's gonna be your location. Around that section, there will be a blue um, hyperlink that says contact information. When you click on that hyperlink, you're gonna see your email address and you'll see what your current URL is. Um, there is a little arrow, almost looks like an edit button beside the URL. You can click on that. It's gonna open up a brand new window that's gonna be called public profile settings. And on the right hand side there, you can actually edit your URL um, and adjust it to whatever you wanted it to adjust it to. So that's just kind of a walkthrough. So again, contact information, click on the edit uh, beside URL. It's going to open up a new page called public profile settings. And then from there, you can adjust your URL on the right hand side. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. Nope, no questions. Perfect. Oh, I see a question. Uh, if you are in the field in HR, how should you use or market your banner? Should you use it to personal brand or use the company you will work for to help represent the company if you are a recruiter? Um, so I don't, I don't encourage you to use branding of companies that you're aspiring to be part of. Um, unfortunately, that might come across a little bit presumptuous. You actually want to be, I would encourage you instead to like use your own type of branding, whatever that branding might be. When we talk about branding, we're not talking about like visual branding. I'm talking about like branding yourself as a imagine like a product and then thinking about what are the features that make you unique? What are the strengths that you're bringing with you? What is the impact that you have? That is your brand. So understanding what sets you apart from all the other graduates that graduated from your program, from all the other people that might have similar experiences, what is it about you that's unique? Um, but yes, I wouldn't, I, and I apologize if I misunderstood your question, but if I, from how I'm understanding it is, yes, you would not use a company's like banner or branding um, if you're hoping to work for them. Um, just because I mean, like it might, it might be confusing to employers, they might think that you're already working for them. And I, again, if I misunderstood your question, please go ahead and just uh, reword it for me and I'll try my best to answer that. 
Okay, so for the next um, couple of minutes or so, and I want to leave some room for, like I said, the Q&A, um, I'm just going to go over tips on how to effectively use your LinkedIn profile. I know this is a lot of information. Um, so again, I, I do want to stick around afterwards, and I'm going to try to um, add some, some documents into the chat afterwards that will hopefully, uh, or into the Q&A that will hopefully help you um, with navigating the platform a bit more. Okay, so first and foremost, um, you want to take control of your privacy settings. Um, when you create a LinkedIn profile, it automatically becomes public um, until your profile is complete, which I mean like your your um, your profile pictures there, your user, your um, headlines there, until you feel like it's complete and until you're comfortable with it being public, I would encourage you to adjust the settings and make it private. Um, just because if someone tries to search you, they will find you and they're gonna see an incomplete profile. Um, and it doesn't take too long to complete the profile and you can always build on it. It doesn't have to be perfect for it to be public. We just don't want it to look incomplete. Um, so some of the key settings that you can try to manage is uh, profile viewing options. You can take a look at that and see, you know, what are the things that you want to adjust. Uh, you can also adjust who can see your connections. You can adjust who can see your job changes, education changes, work anniversaries. Um, this is also good because the first point over here, you actually want people to see these things because LinkedIn's doing the job for you, right? You make a change, LinkedIn's going and alerting everyone that you made this change. You got a promotion, LinkedIn's gonna alert everyone for you. Um, so it's really an easy way for you to stay engaged and stay top of mind for a lot of people. Um, you wanna signal your interest to recruiters at companies you have created job alerts for and then edit your public profile as well. So again, I'm not gonna dig too deep into what you need to change here. I would just encourage you to take a look at these settings and take a look at what works best for for you and your own job search. Um, get engaged and take advantage of this platform. Um, it, it's very easy to just use the platform and to kind of just look through it once in a while. But if you are in that active, proactive job search stage, um, I encourage you to get engaged, um, add connections, add alumni. That's the best place to start is alumni. Um, join groups related to your professional interests so that you exist on the platform by being professionally engaged, whether it be commenting or liking. And, and, and don't put too much pressure on yourself, right? Like you don't have to go and post something. Um, you don't have to go and share something and or write an article yourself. Yourself, you can take a look at what it is that you want to um, you want to engage with and what you want others to see that you're engaged with. Uh, you can follow companies and organizations that you're interested in. You can also follow hashtags. So like if you want to put hashtag environmental or hashtag finance, um, your daily feed will actually bring up different posts that have the same hashtag in it. So it's another way for you to actively stay engaged and stay up to date. Um, you can add in, uh, you can actually add an interest section as well. So interest, um, you can add another section on your profile, and this would actually display um, any influence that, influencers that you're following, any companies that you're following, schools, groups that you're following. So again, it's automatically kind of curating all these different things that you're interested in, and it's showing it to employers. So they are or to, showing it to your network. So again, another way to kind of build your brand a little bit. And then when sending LinkedIn connections, so this brings us to our question in the beginning about how do I actually connect? Um, so once you've used the alumni tool or you found individuals in other ways and you've decided, okay, I looked at their profile, I really want to connect with this person. Um, please, please, please do not send that default message. Please ensure that you are personalizing every single message and be sure to include the following. So you want to include who you are, um, how you're connected with this person. So say, for example, um, you're in the same industry. Say you're an alumni from the same program, from the same university. Um, say they're in a job that you're really interested in. So you want to mention what is it about this person um, and what and how you're connected with them. Then you want to provide a small introduction about yourself. So um, the limit of this, uh, of the um, welcome message, I think is only about 300 characters. So again, you can create a template for yourself, but you want to introduce yourself, um, mention who you are and why you want to connect with them. So for example, um, hi, my name is Serena Sohal. I am a um, graduate from York University. Um, I see that we graduated from the same program. Um, I'm interested in the field that you're in right now. I would love to chat a little bit more about how you entered into this role. So that's just at the top of my head, very, very simple. I'm going to give you a proper example in the next one. Um, and then politely thank the person for considering your request. Your request might be to just connect with them. Your request might be to have an informational interview with them. 
your request might be to just have like, you know, ask them a few questions. So mention what it is that you're hoping to gain out of the connection. And if you simply just want to be connected, that's something that you can add as well. So here is an example um, of a uh, personalized message. So we have here, hello, Manpreet. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student at York, and I see that you are an alumni from the same program. I'm very impressed with your accomplishments and would like to learn more about your career path. I hope you'll consider connecting with me on LinkedIn. Sincerely, James. So that's just a very simple idea of a message that you can send. Um, again, you can copy and paste this as a template and adjust it as you go through, just making sure that, you know, you change the person's name and maybe you need to change, you know, how you know them. Um, but the template will really help so you can connect to more people very easily. Okay, and then as mentioned before, um, here are all the different ways that you can actually connect and engage with people on LinkedIn. So as I mentioned, it's not just about, um, you know, sending those messages or uh, posting something or sharing something, but there's a variety of things that you can do to ensure that you're engaged. So that could be connecting with people, posting stuff, uh, sharing something that someone else has posted, uh, responding to something that someone else has said, maybe in a group discussion or a comment, liking something, uh, bonding with someone, chatting with someone, these are all ways that you can be and stay proactive on LinkedIn. Um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. I mean, take it day by day. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't encourage anyone to be on any type of social media platforms on a daily basis, but it does happen. Um, and I would just say that if you are going to engage with LinkedIn um, on a daily basis, um, you know, limit yourself a little bit too, right? I, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to sit there on their phone and constantly check messages on LinkedIn. Um, what I would say is make LinkedIn part of your job search. So if you are going to spend three hours online and apply for jobs, maybe add, maybe like replace one of those hours with doing connecting activities and engaging on LinkedIn to help with your job search. And I think that brings us to the end of our presentation. So um, I really appreciated being here today. I am so glad that I got to share this information with all of you. Um, we do have a few minutes for questions. Oh, not really. I, I have like a minute for questions. I'll be really quick. I'm just going to take a look at what questions we have here. Um, so do you think LinkedIn is useful in the field of education, especially when trying to move up with the board? Um, I think you, LinkedIn is useful in pretty much every single field. Um, there's only a select few fields that don't necessarily use LinkedIn. So like law enforcement would be one of them. You don't see too many, um, you know, police officers or people that are in that field that are posting on LinkedIn. But every, I would say almost every other field uses LinkedIn. And I definitely think that it would be important and helpful for education uh, and for you to connect with people that are currently currently working in the board. Um, is it considered in poor taste to add former professors? Definitely not. I encourage all of you to stay connected with your classmates, stay connected with your professors. Um, when the poor taste part of it comes down to what your intentions are. If your intentions are pure and you're looking to connect with individuals, to reconnect with them, uh, to learn about their experiences, people are going to understand that. People are going to respect that. But that's where that personalized message comes into play. If you're going to add your professors, send them a personalized message. Remind them that you were one of their students and let them know why you want to connect with them. Um, and what is the etiquette around accepting requests from those you don't know? Um, you are not required to accept requests from anyone that you don't want to. I would encourage you that if someone sends a request to you, um, take a look at their profile. Um, if it makes sense as to why they're connecting with you, then you can accept those requests. But again, personalized messages. The reason I say send a personalized message is because there are very a lot of people that will not accept requests if they just send the default message. They need to understand if I don't know you, why do you want to connect with me? So as a job seeker, you can do the same thing. Be strategic about who you connect with and find out if it actually makes sense. If they're writing you a personalized message, then that will explain to you why they want to connect. I hope that helps. Um, okay, so should short-term volunteer events placements be listed one day, one week, or longer? Uh, yeah, short-term volunteer events placements, yeah, that can all be listed. I would just, again, be consistent about however you mentioned it on your resume, mention it on LinkedIn the same way. Um, so you can definitely, um, you know, write that it was a summer project, or you can write that it was one month. And maybe you create a whole different section for those short-term volunteer opportunities, right? Maybe there's long-term volunteer, and then there's the short-term ones. Like, if you helped out for United Way one day for an event that they had, um, that would be a one-day event. So maybe you add that under a different section. Okay, so I want to be mindful of time. I'm so sorry for taking up longer than I should have, but um, Ellie, I'd like to turn it back to you.
Wow, Serena, that was so, so fantastic. Thank you so much for spending this time with us and for sharing all your knowledge and insight. Um, and thank you to our students, um, alumni and friends for joining us. Um, I'd love to know before you um, leave us if this event helped you today. And I'd appreciate it if you could take a minute to use the Q&A box to just let us know what aspects of today's event you found most meaningful or helpful or any other feedback you'd like to share with Serena. I know she'll really appreciate your comments. Um, and this really helps to inform our events moving forward so that we can tailor them for you. Just before you go, we do have time to run a quick competition poll, which you'll see appear on your screen shortly. Um, and this is for your chance to win one $50 gift card to the York University Bookstore. And the question is, which of York U's three affinity partners employs the highest number of York U alumni? Is it A, TD Insurance, B, Manulife, or C, MBNA MasterCard? And I'll just give everyone a couple more seconds to answer that. Okay, thank you for participating. Um, the answer there was A, TD employs over 2,500 York alumni across all of their services. And I will notify the winner after the event by email. So good luck. And feel free to share today's talk with your friends. It will be posted on our York alumni YouTube channel. And I will also email all attendees a link um, after this event. You may also join our LinkedIn group or follow us on Facebook by searching York University Alumni and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at York U Alumni. Feedback about this or any of our other programming is very, very welcome and can be sent to us on our social channels or at alumni at yorku.ca. If you'd like to learn more about the alumni community or would like to attend more events like this, um, please visit yorku.ca forward slash alumni and friends. We are building events and services to support our young alumni and new grads. And we'd love to hear your suggestions of perks or programs um, to complement what we already offer. So thank you all once again for attending today's event. And thank you again to Serena. Um, looking forward to seeing you at our June event, which will um, be how to improve your money mindset in a digital era. Wishing you all continued health and wellness during this time. Goodbye.